Hi guys, um, so in this video I'm going to be going through the solutions to question 5 in the January 2021 paper. Alright, so in question 5 here, we have 60 students took an algebra test which comprised of 15 multiple choice questions. The number of correct answers that each student obtained is recorded in the table. Right, so I want you to understand that this here actually means that this is my frequency, right? That is how often these um, correct answers occur, right? So this first line here means that um, number of correct answers, right? So six students got eight correct answers, fourteen students got nine correct answers, right? Now the first part they said um, using the table determine the number of students who scored exactly 13 correct answers. So all we need to do here, the number of students getting 13 correct answers is going to be this, 11, right? So the answer for this part here is simply 11, right? The next thing we want here, we want to know what is the modal number of correct answers, right? The modal number of correct answers. So the mode is the one that corresponds to the highest frequency. So I already said that this here is my frequency, right? How often these scores actually occur. When we look at the numbers here, our highest frequency is actually 14. So the modal number of correct answers, right, is going to be 9, right? So most students got 9 as a correct answer. The next part here, they want us to determine the median of the correct answers. Now the thing is, in the question, they didn't tell us how many students we have, right? So all we need to do is to add this column here to determine how many students we have, right? So that's 4 and 16 is uh, 20, 22, 28, 30, that's 41, that's 50. That gives me a total of 60 students, right? So therefore, in this um, class here, we had 60 students, right? Now, the thing is, we want to figure out what is my median. Now, your median is the middle number, right? Now, because we have 60 students, we essentially, when we want to find median, we must arrange an ascending order and then determine the exact middle. But here's the problem. 60 is an even number, right? So what we can do, so if we go from number of students, 1 to 60, right? We can't get an exact middle. So what we need to do, we need to find my 30th and my 31st. So you need to find the 30th and the 31st student. You need to figure out what their mark would, right? So here's what we need to do. So we need to figure out the score for the 30th student, and we need to figure out the score for the 31st student. So let's start checking. So we have six students here. We have 14, so that gives me a total of 20. If I add an X2 here, that's 22. I add an X6 um, here, that's 28. I'm still not there. And when I reach here, if I add two more, then that's my 30th student. So that is going to correspond to a number of correct answers as 12. Let's check that again. Uh, 14 and 6 is 20, 22, 28, 30. So my 30th student actually scored um, 12. Therefore, my 31st student is going to fall here. This is where the 31st student is going to fall. So therefore, that 31st student is actually scoring 13 correct answers. So my median, right? So this is how you find the median when you have an even number of data sets. In this case here, we need to take the score of 12, add it to the score of 13, and divide by 2, and that's going to give me a median of 12.5, right? So your median number of correct answers will be 12.5. For this next one here, it's a probability question that a student chosen at random had at least 12 correct answers, right? At least 12 correct answers. Now, 12 correct answers, right, corresponds to two students. Now, they said at least. Whenever you all see the word at least, that means 12 or more, right? So we're looking at 12 or more, right? So therefore, that'll include 13, 14, and 15. So therefore, we need to figure out how many students scored 12, 13, 14, and 15. So that will be 2 plus 11 plus 9 plus 10, right? So that is, 
So number of students scoring between right um, sorry not between more than or scoring 12 or more Right, is going to be equal to so we're adding up this right so that's 19 well, actually 11 plus 9 is 20 that's 30 that's 32 right that gives me a total of 32 so the probability is simply going to be 32 over 60 right so we can leave our answer as that or we can reduce it if we want and you're going to, you're going to get 8 over 15 Right, so that's my probability there. Either we say 32 over 60 or 8 over 15. Right, um, next one here, part B. A group of students wrote a physics exam. Each of the students achieved a grade 1, 2, 3, or 4, and the pie chart shows the results. Right, so we have a pie chart here grades 1, 2, 3, and 4. What do they want? 39 students scored a grade 3, determine the total number of students who wrote the exam. Right, so what we have here is a pie chart right and we need to know that in a pie chart we have 360 degrees right but what we do know is that 39 students correspond to 117 right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna say 39 students right well, actually let's put it let's write it the next way let's put 117 degrees right on your circle right corresponds to 39 students right so what we can do we can figure out for one degree so one degree actually corresponds to 39 over 117 students right now we want to get the total number that total number here must correspond to 360 degrees so therefore 360 degrees right is going to correspond by correspond to all we need to do is to take 39 over 117 right and multiply by 360 degrees and this here will give me the total number of students i have so that's 39 over 117 multiplied by 360 and i'm going to get 120 students Right? So that's how we do a question like this. You know part of the whole circle, right? 117 degrees corresponds to 39. Figure out for one degree first and then work out for 360 degrees. Now, they said the number of students who achieve grades 1, 2, or 4. So this is grade 1 to 2 to 4 right is two to four to three right now remember we know that the total number of students in this class here is 120 right a student pass if a student pass the exam if he or she achieved a grade one two or three right a grade one two or three how many students pass the exam right so what we need to do so you already know we have 39 students got a grade 3 but we don't know how many got grade 1 how many got grade 4 or how many got um, a grade 2 so we need to figure that out right now you have a total of 120 students so the grades 2 1 2 and 4 so grades 1 2 and 4 right is going to be equal to 120 students minus the number of students who got grade threes which would be 39 right and that's going to give me 120 minus 39 and that's going to give me 81 <clears throat> so i have 81 students who actually got grades one two and three so all we need to do we need to figure out so grade one right the number of students who actually got grade one now when you're looking at a ratio you have two parts four parts three parts 
So the total number of parts here will be 4 and 2, 6 and 3, 9. Right? So you have a total of 9 parts. So that means the number of students who got grade 1s will be 2 over 9 multiplied by 81. Right? And that's going to give me 18. Number of students who got a grade 2 right, is going to be um, 4 over 9 multiplied by 81. And that's going to be 36. Right? And remember, we already know how many students got a uh, grade 3. That was 39. Right? So the question said how many students passed. <clears throat> so total passes would be everyone who got a grade 1, 2, or 3. So that's 18 plus 36 plus 39. And that's going to give me a total of 93 students, right? That's a total of 93 students. Right? And then we still have one more part to do, right? They said determine the angle um, for the sector representing grade 1 on the pie chart. So this is your grade 1 here, right? And we know many students um, that actually got a grade 1, right? So the angle is simply going to be the number of students who got a grade 1, which is 18. So this is going to be 18 over the total number of students, which is 120, multiplied by 360 degrees. So this here is going to be 18 over 120 multiplied by 360. And you're going to get an angle of 54 degrees. Right? So that's the angle there for um, the grade ones. Right? So um, just hit like and subscribe. Right? Um, please feel free to share the videos. That's no problem. Alright, guys. Take care.